how does code keep the Obel Tower standing? Picture your house. Now imagine it's twice as tall, or maybe three times or four times as tall. How tall could your house be? Well, unfortunately in architecture, the sky is not the limit. Long before that, your house will have fallen over. Possibly it got too heavy and all the weight from the top of the building has crushed the foundations and the whole thing has crumbled. Or possibly the wind blew it over. As a building gets taller and taller, the strain from the wind starts to push it over and sooner or later the building won't be able to take that strain and it'll collapse. Now when a building falls over, we generally describe that as a very bad thing. And so architects and engineers want to make sure buildings are nice and stable. And generally, there's two ways to see if a building will stay standing. The first way is to try it and see. You can build the building and then see if it stays up. However, should your building collapse, you can't generally go around saying, let's just call that a practice run and have a second go. People want the buildings to stay up from the beginning. So to achieve that, you have to do the calculations in advance. You design your building and then you go through and calculate how strong the wind will be. You calculate how strong the forces will be from all the weight and you see if the calculations predict that the building will stay standing. And this is what architects and engineers do and they use very clever computer code to do all those calculations for them and make sure the building will stay standing long before it's even built. And that's how computer code makes sure we can have buildings which don't fall over. Okay, I've, I've lied a little bit here. Some of you may have realized we've had buildings for longer than we've had computers. So there must be a way to design a building and make sure it doesn't fall over without using a computer. And that's absolutely true. But something has changed though. If you walk around Belfast, or in fact, any city or town, you will see that the buildings built before computers tend to be shaped like a box. And that's because building a box shaped building makes the calculations easier. When architects and engineers had to do all the calculations by hand, they couldn't be too adventurous. They had to build buildings that they knew would stay up, and so they had to be the type for which the calculations are simple. Since the invention of computers though, we can go wild. Now that the computer can do the calculations for us, not only can we use new and exciting materials, we can have buildings built with huge amounts of glass or strange shapes bits of steel, but we can also make the building themselves unusual shapes. No longer are we limited to boxes and the occasional bits sticking out the top. We can have crazy shaped buildings. And it's because of the code that we know they're not gonna fall over. When an architect comes up with some new design or new shape of building, they can feed that 3D model into a computer. The computer can split it up into tiny sections and the computer code then goes through and calculates all the forces for all the sections of the building. It checks the stress and the strain on all of them and make sure it's not gonna fall over. And so it's because of very nice computer code that architects and engineers can now build crazy buildings, things like the Obel Tower, buildings that are much more taller than we've ever had, buildings that are more exciting than we've ever had. And all of this is because of code.